Here we are again with the best albums of the month segment. Always enjoy rounding up the previous month, uh, highlighting some of the best releases for you guys. Just in case you missed my reviews of the albums or just in case you want to hear me regurgitate what are the best albums of the past month again. As always, I'll just give you my favourite picks. Um, fewer than usual, I think, this month. Uh, although right at the end, there was one that snuck in, which I want to talk about first. But um, yeah, I think I was expecting the year to start booming with albums that I was absolutely in love with. But I don't think that's quite happened in the way I expected. Certainly feels to me like there are not as many albums this year that I'm loving compared to last year. And I'm wondering if that's going to change as the year goes on but it's definitely looking slimmer than usual. And I think it's weird because people were saying last year was like that because of the COVID-19 pandemic that was just rattling everyone's plans. And, you know, people weren't making as much music, weren't able to get to studios to record music and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I didn't really notice a drop in quality, but this year, maybe the ripple effect of that has, has caused something to go on, or maybe I'm just getting harsher in my old age could be that. want to highlight Yola though with this really fantastic album here which I think is absolutely going overlooked um, uh, usually because people don't tend to care that much about country music but I don't really think this album is country uh, traditionally anyway. I think she does a great job of blending and fusing the worlds of soul and country together. She's not the first person to ever do it. I think there was an artist a few years ago that I quite liked called Priscilla Rene. She put out a good album that did a similar thing. Country Soul have been kind of colliding for decades anyway, but I think when you get it right like this, you deserve all the praise in the world. Dancing Away in Tears, one of my favourite tracks of the year. The Soulful Bliss on that one is absolutely to die for. You've got the rollicking energy of the really high uh, Aretha Franklin-esque, like soulful, funky jams that she throws in too. Lots to love here, lots of diversity, um, you know, pretty standard lyrically, but it's pretty emotive with the way she expresses herself and her vocals. There's huge amounts of passion coming from Yola. Definitely an artist to watch at the moment. I think she's kind of come out of nowhere and definitely deserves uh, way more love. Certainly need to mention Vince Staples, um, perhaps a controversial take, but this might be actually my favorite Vince Staples album yet. I think this time around, he's really nailing that fear that 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 uh, power behind the lifestyle that he's kind of been caught up in he's surrounded by the surroundings and you know everything that's happened has kind of come like you know tumbling down on him and you can just hear the pain in his voice that i don't think you quite heard before and i think actually the production is matching his style better than it ever has i don't necessarily feel as though you know big fish theory was the uh the the kind of a uh, home run that a lot of people label it as. I think there was potential in that sound, but I don't think that album nailed it. Um, and I didn't really care for FM that much either. I just think this time around, the collision of Kenny Beats and Vince Staples, is just really worked. And I feel as though they know each other incredibly well and it comes through in the music brilliantly. Very intriguing electronic album from Corless. Um, definitely one of the weirder, glitchier, strange odysseys of the year in terms of electronic releases. Uh, certainly one I think I'd gladly go back to and just experience that bizarreness that Corliss uh, manages to exuberate on the album. Definitely one for the more experimental listeners out there. I feel as though Corliss has really uh, jumped out of nowhere with a really cool sound design that I think isn't really matched anywhere else. So certainly check that one out. Was really impressed with the Dark Side album. I think I feel as though the psychedelic nature that they go for on the album is incredibly welcomed. I think the tracks that really have roaring guitar moments are absolutely sensational and it only made me want to hear more of that across the entire thing. Lots of impressive vocal melodies that come through as well, very subtle at points but they're very effective on tracks like The Limit and Liberty Bell, some sensational work coming through there and once again adding to Nicholas Jar's already 
momentous discography that is just getting better and better as years go by. Surprise of the month, probably, well, maybe Vince Staples was the biggest surprise, but I don't know, Bleachers, not too far behind for me. I think I was really surprised to like this one as much as I did. I think this is certainly one of the best uh, albums that Jack Antonoff's been involved in. I really enjoy the overall earnest delivery that comes through in Jack's voice throughout this album. I think the influences of Heartland Rock particularly Bruce Springsteen, the best days of Bruce Springsteen are certainly welcomed in tracks like Stop Making This Hurt and uh, particularly Don't Go Dark. Like I say, not, you know, the most original album in the world, but I think it actually does what it does incredibly well. Could have done with a stronger start and a stronger ending, but I still think this is definitely um, the best Bleachers album I've heard so far. Finally, want to close off with Album of the Month, which is Left's Ego Death, in my opinion. Definitely, again, an overlooked album that I'm not seeing half as many people talk about it as they should be. Definitely a fantastic collision of electronic genres coming together. You've got dubstep in there, you've got techno house, just creating a really cool interstellar vibe that makes it feel very spacey and you know intergalactic in the best kinds of ways very unique listen i think and it's just a very uh visceral electronic album that i think is going to stick with me for the rest of the year and years beyond so that's everything from me the best albums of the month best albums of july along with the best singles popping up to best tracks that i've heard uh over here somewhere and that's it thank you let me know your thoughts on my picks what are your picks as well what do you think i've missed and if you've listened to any of these, let me know what you think of them. Have a good day. Make sure you check them out if you haven't already. Please subscribe and goodbye.